Last week, something happened here. I'm not sure. Well, I am sure. It was the Lord. Uh, We had something called the Deliverance Experience. And everybody's been asking, what is this about? Well, we were trying to build back our 1030 service and get people back in the doors again. And we thought, you know what? We want to just just remove the order of service, if you will, and let people share their hearts and pray with people and just see what God. Someone said, do you have a? I said, no, it's the Holy Spirit time. It's not Dana time. I don't really know what's going to happen today. I just know that I've asked a couple people to share. And so we're going to see where the Lord takes us. We're going to have some time of prayer at the end and some worship. Um, so I've asked Ashton Donaway to come up, and she's going to start us first. And so I just want to say as she comes up that I wish I looked as good as her when I was pregnant. Uh, <laughs> so Ashton, you're beautiful. We thank you. Inside and out, you're beautiful. So let's give it up for Ashton as she comes. Devin, can you grab that chair? And uh, as she comes, we're just going to allow her to share and that God would move and work and continue to work in her life. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jill, I'm already crying from worship, y'all. Don't judge me. I'm pregnant. You're in church. Don't judge. It's okay with y'all. I'm just going to get comfortable up here. Um, I don't know how long I can stand, so I hope that's okay. Cool. Um, thanks for letting me talk to you for a couple minutes this morning. I hope I say something that resonates in your heart. Um, I've already given it up to Jesus, so, you know, hopefully I don't cuss or anything like that. I think that'd be bad. I don't think Dana would be very happy with me. Um, So I guess uh, to start at the beginning, for me, um, i got to give you some background um, before my testimony. Uh, When I came up, um, I know now that my parents followed Jesus, but they didn't really do it in the same way that that I see it now. Um, They did teach me. They were always divorced, so I didn't even know that was a thing. I just thought people had two homes, so I'm not, like, impacted by that in in a negative way at all. I just had my dad's house and my mom's house, and I got two Christmases, so that was cool. Um... They did teach me um, to believe in things that you can't see, so I had that. I I believed in Santa Claus and ghosts and um, will and spirit. I just didn't know that spirit was Jesus quite yet. Um, So, yeah, growing up was, was, uh, I had a good upbringing, but I just never, I never really went to church. I found it intriguing that my friends did. I didn't really understand what it was about. Um, But everything else was pretty normal. Uh, When I got to college, I think I was... I was about 21 when I found out I was pregnant for the first time. Um, yeah, I wasn't really prepared for that one. It sent me down a, a different road than I had expected, but eventually I, you know, I had accepted the idea, and again, I didn't really know Jesus yet, so I didn't really have that to rely on. I didn't really know what was going on. I didn't know what was going to come of it. Um, so I, I went full term. I didn't know that anything was wrong until my baby came out. Um, he only came out a couple weeks early. Um, he only lived for about a day. Uh, so it's still difficult for me to kind of put into words what that meant at the time. And I, I really wish that I had Jesus back then because I didn't, I didn't understand what was going on, y'all. Um, looking back now, I can understand why, why things happened the way that they did. Um, but it definitely took me a while. Uh, Fast forward a couple of years, and I met my husband, Thurman, freshly divorced little hottie. Um, He already had two kids, so that was a little crazy for me because here, you know, I spent nine months of my life planning to be a parent, and then I wasn't, so I fell off the deep end there a little bit. Um, So we we, uh, did not take it slow. Look, he's a little nervous right now. He's like, Lord, what is she going to say? Chill. Um, I did the calculations, and a year after we met, we were married, and we already had Berkeley. So uh, we, we weren't careful about that one. Um, so, yeah, and then I, I had those two stepkids that I wasn't ready for. You don't really plan when you're a kid to step into being a step-parent. You know, you kind of plan on your own kids. And I know it's a, a blended families are just kind of normal now. But, you know, as a little girl growing up, I just didn't really see that. I figured I'd have my own kids, you know. But then again, I spent nine months of my life thinking I'd be a parent, and then I wasn't. So I had learned that I'm, I'm just not in control. But still at that point, I didn't know who was yet. So when we got married, I, again, still didn't understand Jesus. I was intrigued, but I wasn't ready to call myself a Christian. I knew there was something there. I never believed that there was nothing there. I knew there was something there, but I just didn't know what yet. 
So when we got married, I didn't want any word to be in our wedding. I didn't even want like a grace set over the dinner just because I wanted it to be authentic and I didn't understand. So I didn't want anything that I didn't understand in our wedding. So Thurman complied. Thank you. It got us here. Um, so yeah, uh, after we got married, uh, we, we both decided to start reading some word together. Um, he didn't come up with much either. He, same as me. He, he knew there was something, wasn't quite sure what it was yet. Um, but we decided to get into the word together. And he had already been going to church a little bit, so he, he wrangled me in, and we started going together. And um, within, I want to say, probably a year, two years uh, into our marriage, we had both been baptized, and we were going to church regularly, and we went through that that journey together, which is really cool. I'm really thankful for that. Um, on our five-year wedding anniversary, we had Mark remarry us over to Manuel, um, get that third cord into our marriage. So that's really cool too. So looking back on my loss, now I understand that that had to happen for me to be ready. I mean, not to say that we're ever really ready, but I needed Jesus to be able to be ready. Had I not suffered that loss, I wouldn't have been ready to take on two kids. I didn't know what I was doing. I sent Bella to school in her pajamas one day because I didn't know it was pajamas. I had no idea what I was doing, but I had that hole in my heart somewhere, and I didn't know how to fill it. It was Jesus. (laughs) And it had to be exactly that way for me to be ready for that life. All right, fast forward. Um about 10 more years. Um, I know it's weird because I must have been like two when I got married, right? Um, About 10 years later, I find myself in quarantine with four kids and an addiction. Wasn't quite ready for that one either. Um, Wasn't quarantine's fault, but it sure didn't help, y'all. So uh, here we are again at this crossroads, and I'm wondering What's going on? And I have Jesus on my side this time. So I have it in me to say that there's something here. Um, I wasn't really ready to stop, though. Uh, That's where Thurman comes in. He just, he kind of gave me that nudge that I needed. Um, I spent December away from the family. When I left, I still didn't want to. I still didn't understand what Jesus was doing. In my journal on day three, it says, but God. I went kicking and screaming, y'all, but day three, it took me three days. And I saw, and it took me right back to being 21 and suffering that loss that I did not understand. Because those two instances in my mind It's like, if you've seen, I always think of this, that there's a cartoon that's got Jesus and a little kid, and the kid's got his teddy bear, and Jesus is asking for it, and he's he's saying, no, but it's my favorite, and Jesus has this huge teddy bear behind his back that the kid can't see, just waiting to give it to him, but you have to give up what you have, even if you think you can. So for me, I'm so, so thankful that I was brought up to believe in things that you can't see. But at the same time, for me now, looking back at just those examples, God knows how many more examples there are in my life. But looking at those two examples, it's almost not about faith and hope anymore because I can see it. I see it every day. I live it every day. I didn't do anything to deserve any of this. I have everything that I ever wanted. So I guess maybe there's somebody that tried to do the math with me being gone in December and this happening. (laughs) One week after I got home, (laughs) we got this one. No, we did not plan her. And yes, I do understand how it happens. (laughs) But Luca's our youngest. He's seven. And um, we hadn't really done much to prevent it for about six years and nothing had happened. So we just thought that our time of having children was up. 
Um, looking back now, I understand that my health wasn't ready, my body wasn't ready, my life wasn't ready for what had to come. We named her Moxie. If you look up Moxie in the dictionary, it's force of character, determination, and fortitude. And looking at that now, and I never, there was enough, I'm glad he said okay because there was never another name. I don't know, it just popped in my head. She was so determined to have life that I had to get a new life for her to be born. Girlfriend made me go to rehab. Come on now, that's determination. And she wouldn't have happened if every single thing had not happened exactly the way that it happened. Every tear I cried, every struggle I put my family through, all of it had to happen exactly, exactly that way for my life to be what it is now. I didn't earn any of this. I don't deserve any of it. But I'm so thankful to God today that I can see. I see it. That's all I got for you. Thanks. Thank you. Love you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, give it up for Ashton again. She awesome job. Awesome, awesome job. Ashton, I know that's not easy to do, but uh, you did it in a great way that people could get the point across and grow closer to God. Uh, how many of you know the Holy Spirit's moving in this place? Amen. Now I'm going to ask Zach to come up and give his testimony. Zach. Thank you for doing this today as well. Let's give Zach a hand. You do whatever you want. Well, I guess I'll sit down and make myself at home. <laughs> well, my name is Zach. For those who don't know me, um, I'm 28. I was born and raised in Salisbury, Maryland. I actually was raised in the Salisbury campus, and I remember sitting on, like, the front row with my mom. I knew I was going to cry, so sorry. <laughs> this is my first time I ever cried giving my testimony, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so anyway, I remember sitting on the front row, and um, Pastor Tom would be preaching, and then he would take off running around the church. And I was like, this man is crazy. Like, what is all this? I said, this is, this is crazy. I remember Pete. I was, I was sitting in the front row. I remember Pete singing, and, and I was just there with my mom, and I, I really didn't understand what was going on. I just knew that it, it was kind of right. Um, and that was when I was like 13 or so. So to fast forward a little bit, I was raised in the church. Um, and I always dealt with, I guess it would be like acceptance issues, more or less. Like not being accepted, like in my family and certain things that I've been through in my, my childhood. Um, so yeah, so to fast forward to like high school. Um, I was, you know, on a varsity team, uh, football, baseball. I did all the sports. Um, I was, I guess you can say popular or whatever. <laughs> so, um, so after high school, I started drinking. I started, um, you know, using marijuana and stuff like that to fit in because I didn't feel, ex you know, I wanted to be accepted. So I wanted to be cool. I wanted to be the life of the party, more or less. And, um, yeah, it was definitely that, um, Unfortunately, I was. So, so fast forward, um, I found out I was having a little girl, okay? So, when she was born, she was born, it was a traumatic experience that um, me and my family went through. Um, we, we almost lost her, but God saved her. He had another purpose. I didn't, you know, it was, it was just a tough situation. And um, going through that traumatic experience, at that time I was introduced to a um, nerve pill, more or less anxiety pill called Xanax. And um, so I took it, and like immediately, like the weight was lifted. I was like, I can finally breathe. Like I can actually deal with the situation. And, you know, when I got back home, I just kept dealing with the, the, the traumatic experience. And then I had to go to doctors and they diagnosed me with PTSD and 
Then I got on the Xanaxes, the Clonopins, all, all the nerve medicines that are very um, addictive. And to make a long story short, that led to, to me using um, opioids, you know, um, you know, Percocets and stuff like that. And I would spend my whole check, you know. I, unfortunately, I would spend my whole check just to go get the, the stuff that I needed because I was addicted at that point. I had no way to, to get out. I felt like I was trapped. Um, and then I, then I moved on to, the, to even to, to worse stuff. Um, and hmm. so, so my rock bottom was, I'm going to try to say this without crying, but so the, the moment that I hit rock bottom was I went down this dirt road, um, at that point, I was a terrible father. I wasn't around. I was out, you know, doing my thing and uh, running away from God as far as I could. And at that point, I had no hope. I was, I was just done. I was contemplating suicide for months. And I was like, tonight's the night. This is, this is, where, this is where it ends. So, so my God moment was, I had, mm, I had the gun to my head. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Just bear with me. I'm going to get it out. I'm going to get it out. So I was about to pull the trigger. I mean, literally, I was... If you can imagine, I was, my, my finger was on the trigger. And all it would have took is just a little bit of pressure, and that was it. And so I heard a voice. I know you got, I'm not crazy, I promise. I'm not crazy. So I heard this voice in the back seat of my car, and I was, and it said, don't do it. I was like, ain't nobody here. Like, hold on a minute. Like, what, what was that? So I even turned around and looked in my back seat because I literally thought <laughs> there was somebody there. So I'm not crazy, but I knew that was God. That was my God moment. <laughs> and, um, and, and yeah, so to, to fast forward to, um, it's going to get better now. That was the low point. It'll start getting better. So now I got that out. I'm good. Um, so I, I went to, um, to my mom and, and some of the family, and I was like, Look, I, I need help. You know, this is this is not the right way. I know I need something. I'm not sure. I think it's God. I don't know. So she got on the phone and she was looking everywhere. They wanted to send me to Florida, Tennessee, all these other places. And um, all of a sudden, Teen Challenge popped up. And what Teen Challenge is is a faith based faith based program for um, people who struggle with um, addiction and life control and issues. And um, I checked myself into a detox um, program, which was like a week long, I think. And um, that was the, the worst time in my life, you know, coming off of all the things that I was doing. It was, um, it was terrible. Um, but I knew when I was going through that week, this this will never be again. I was, you know, I was, this this will never happen again. And um, so, so to fast forward like another week, um, I checked myself in the Teen Challenge. It's a year-long program. So you're in this place for a whole year. It's, I, for other words, it's like Jesus on steroids. Like, it's just nonstop all the time. And when I first got there, I was just, you know, I was like, what is, what is this all about? It reminded me of, like, Pastor Tom running around. I'm like, okay, what's going on here? You know, this is, this is, this is crazy. You know, like, these grown men were on their knees and just, like, crying. And, and I've never experienced anything like it. And on like the, the sixth or seventh day, 
um, I was sitting in chapel, kind of something like this, and I was sitting all the way in the back, and and I just started crying. Like God, just like just the Holy Spirit grabbed a hold of me, and next thing I know, I was I was up on the altar, and and I was just like, you know what, God, this is this is like this is yours. You know, this battle is not mine. This is yours. Um, so at that moment is when I started to learn how to fully surrender my life to God. And I knew at that moment that God was the answer for all my problems. And um, so I went through the year-long program. You know, I graduated. Um, I came out. I got a job. Um, you know, started, you know, I was very involved in church. Um, stay, stay connected. That's very important. You have to stay connected to um to a body of believers, to a church. Um, and to fast forward a little bit more, uh, maybe a month or two after I got home, I um, signed up for Bible college. And I got my associate's degree just a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah, a couple months ago. So I got my associate's degree um, about a year and a half, almost two years ago. God, <laughs> God sent me um, my helpmate. My, my wife, um, Michelle, <laughs> and she she really is, you know, the best thing that's happened to me. <laughs> she she's helped me so much, you know, through this, and um, and and I love her to death. <laughs> so, so yeah, so and then um, I also just started my own business, um, a long a, a landscaping business, um, and I named it Renewed Services because. I felt like that's the word that God, the, the name that God gave me to name this business was renewed services because how God can take old things and he can make them like new again. And um, there's a lot of scriptures that, that talk about, I mean, that's what he does. He's, that's what God does, you know. And um, so, so, yeah, so I guess my message to, to those who may be struggling with something, I don't know if you're here today or if you're watching online, but, but my advice to you is, to look to God because God is the answer. There's no other answer. The world has no answer for you. Um, the, the, main, the main ingredient is surrender. You know, we have to surrender, and that, that's really with all of us. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of my story in a nutshell, and thank you guys for letting me share. Thank you. Stay right up here. Didn't he do a wonderful job? Oh, no, don't go. You're staying right here, buddy, right up there. It'll be great. Uh, it's been an awesome time to hear these testimonies, but I believe that God is either working on somebody's heart online or somebody in this place. And so what I want to do is go into a time of prayer. And so last week I asked people to come forward. We just came all across this front altar, if you will, this front area. And so if you feel comfortable in doing that, do that. If not, you can stay in your seat. That's fine. We're going to come forward as the musicians come, and uh, we're going to have a season of prayer. But in particular, now, we, we can pray for anything today that the Lord wants us to pray for. Uh, but in particular today, I want to pray for people who are struggling with addiction and people who have family members who are struggling with addiction. Because I think a lot of times, and I'm not an expert in addiction, but I think a lot of times the, the addicts don't realize how it kind of trickles into the family. It affects everyone. It doesn't just affect them. It affects moms and dads, sisters, cousins. You know, it just, it spreads friends. Um, and so I really, I want to come against this curse that the enemy tries to bring to get people tripped up who are struggling with addiction to feel like they can't get out or they're no good anymore or because they've testified that people look at them as a failure because that's not the case. Um, so I think we need to get over the shame and get over all that mess and just say, God, we want to go help other people. And I think you guys did that today. I know you did that today. And so today we're going to have a time of prayer. So if you could come up um, and we're going to pray. Um, and I'm not asking everybody, anybody in particular to pray. I'm going to pray. And Zach, I'm going to ask Zach to be up here with me. We're going to pray. So if you need any kind of prayer today, can you come forward? And uh, I'm just going to start all praying and let's come and gather. I'm going to start all praying and then... If you need particular prayer, like right off the bat, um, I want us, before we leave today in particular, 
Um, I'm going to ask Rob to come up in a minute. We're going to lay hands on Rob today and pray for his wife, Teresa. We're going to ask Michelle to come up, Zach's wife, in a minute to pray over her sister-in-law who has cancer. So stuff like that. If you guys have a need, this is the place we need to come and we need to pray for people. Amen? Amen. So let's start. Let's just gather up. I'm going to start off with a prayer for uh, families who struggle with addiction, and we're just going to let the Holy Spirit go from there. Are you all right with that? If you're hungry, I got a snack because I'm not cutting it off at a certain time, okay? So come on up. Let's pray right now. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come. And God, we say the devil is a liar in the name of Jesus. And today, God, we declare right now as a church that any addiction, any person who is watching today who is struggling with addiction, God, that they would surrender right now in the name of Jesus, that they would call out to you, Lord, because we know, Lord, that there is power in your name. So, Lord, I come against any generational curse that has been extended to people's families. God, I pray for the child who has a parent today who you know is struggling with addiction and it has been a burden on you and you have kept it to yourself for years. I pray for that person today, God. I pray for the for people who are here who has a child that is struggling with addiction and you're trying to come to church and you're keeping it a secret but it's tearing you down. Today, Lord, I pray. I pray for that parent, the parents who day in and day out, God, are surrendering everything to you, looking for your help, God. I pray, Lord, for the one who is an addict themselves. And God, I pray, Lord, that today would be the day for life transformation. I pray that today would be the day that they would step out of their comfort zone and realize that they cannot do this anymore, that there is no other place that they can go to find that fulfillment, Lord. Whether it be alcohol addiction, Lord, or drug addiction. And some people just think that they don't have a problem when the bottom line is maybe they do. Maybe you need to show them today that they do have a problem with some of this. That they don't even realize that today, Holy Spirit, you would speak and you would do what you need to do. So, Father, I pray for that right now. I pray over the one who's hurting. I pray over the one who's had something terrible happen. Maybe it's been a loss of some kind that you're experiencing a death of someone, you can't get over it. Or maybe it's someone in your family who's been diagnosed with cancer and you're trying to get, you're asking God questions, why? And you're trying to have faith through this trial, but it's been hard on you today. God, I pray for that person today. Holy Spirit, I pray you would do something in this place. God, I thank you for how you're moving. I thank you for how you're working. And I pray that that would just continue to lay on somebody's heart today. I pray for someone right now who's struggling in a marriage. Someone who doesn't know what to do is praying for wisdom today. God, that you would you would give them the wisdom that they need, that you would give them the strength that they need. Lord, I pray right now for a young adult who is here in school, and you're terrified. You don't know what the future holds. You don't know what's going on. You're getting ready to start another semester, and all you can think is, oh, my goodness, how am I going to get through another semester? I pray for that person, God, who's dealing with anxiety, who's dealing with fear of the unknown. God, I pray against that the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for a teenager that is here on this property, God. And I pray, Lord, that they would continue to be on fire for Jesus, Lord. And I pray that the revival that they experienced at camp would keep lingering and it would go into people's homes and that the parents can't take it anymore because the kids are singing songs about Jesus and talking about scriptures and talking about what he's done in their life and that the parents would be moved and they would learn to surrender and start going to work and start telling everybody about Jesus because it always starts with a kid to get us straight. And so, Lord, I pray that that would continue to go, God. I pray it would flood all over us, God. I pray that when we go out on Adopt a Block, it wouldn't just be another bag of the food that we get to somebody. But, God, we would go in this particular area of Adopt a Block where we're doing projects. And, Lord, before we do something new, we want to tear down the old trailers, God. In our life, God, before we move to the next level, God, will you tear down anything that is hindering us before we go to the next level, God? Lord, we release it right now in the name of Jesus. Anything that is keeping us from worshiping you, from giving our all to you, that it would be gone right now in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, right now I pray for Michelle. Michelle, can you come up? Let's gather around Michelle. We're going to pray for Michelle's sister-in-law who has cancer. How old is she? 32. And how many kids does she have? Four kids, 32 years old. How many of you believe? That God is a miracle working God. How many believe that doctors are great, but we serve a great physician who is more than able? So, Lord, we lay hands on Michelle right now, God. 
God, I pray for her sister-in-law right now. And Lord, I pray that your will would be done. God, if it is the healer, healer. But Lord, we know to guy is the gain. That's what, the, that's what your word tells us. So either way, God, she's winning with you because Lord, we know that you prepared a place for her at the Father's house. So God, I pray in the meantime, you would be with Michelle who's trying to be there and help support them, take care of them. God, Lord, I'm sure she's keeping it in, but today, may it go. May it go right now, God. And may you do a new thing in Michelle while she's trying to minister to them. God, do a new work in her life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Rob, will you come up? Um, Rob, you need prayer. So, and I know you don't like to ask for things. I went to see Teresa this week. And uh, when I was standing in her room, I said, God, I said, man, she is a miracle sitting there. But I also know that we got a long road ahead. And so um, I want to pray for Rob because he's trying to be strong, I know. And his kids went to camp, and they got a taste of the Holy Spirit, and they came back fired up. And so I pray that that would continue to linger in Rob's life, that Rob would continue to stay fired up, filled with the Holy Spirit, because uh, God's, God's doing it. He's already doing it. We can't see everything. We don't know everything right now, but he's doing it. He's working. And you look back a year ago where you come through, God's still been good. You're getting your bills paid, aren't you? You're going to work. Come on. God's still taking care of you. And if you're not paying your bills, he'll make a way for that too. Amen. Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray for Rob. In particularly, Lord, right now, church, I can't hear you. In particularly, I pray for Teresa. And so, God, I pray right now, God, as she's come home. And, Lord, it looks like the door's closed on one end with the insurance company. But, God, we also know, God, that you're, you're, when you close the door, you open another one. And so, Lord, I pray that you would go in his home in Deer Harbor, God. And I pray that the presence and the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit would continue to fall on that house. And I pray for Teresa right now, God. And Lord, the same God who has made her and created her in her mother's womb is the same God who could take care of a little brain tumor. And so, God, I pray for her uh, ability, her therapy. God, at home, it might look like what's going to happen now. But God, you're not done with her yet. So I pray in the meantime, help us enjoy the journey, God. I pray for Rob that you would give him strength, God. I pray that those kids, Lord, would keep leaning to you. That, Lord, you would give them everything that they need every time they turn around and say, what do we do now? God, you would be real. That you would reveal yourself to them in this very moment, God. Lord, I thank you that Rob is a team player. Rob's showing up playing the bass guitar while his wife's at home today, Lord. Lord, he needed this today. And I pray, Lord, that his willingness to serve you would fall in all areas of his life, that you would bless him, Lord. Bless him at work, God. Bless him at home. Everything that he touches would prosper, God. And we pray for anointing and strength and grace and mercy over him right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We love you, Rob. Praying for you. Anybody else need prayer today? Anybody need prayer? This morning, need prayer. Yep, April, come on up. What you need prayer for today, April? Anything in particular? Strength, your friend that's in? Fear, anxiety. Okay. Zach, fear, anxiety. He's going to pray over you right now. Yep. Full deliver. God, we just humbly come to you right now. God, we come to your throne, God, and we, Lord, we just lift you up in this situation, God. Lord, we pray for this young lady, God, with that is struggling with fear and anxiety, God. We pray, Lord, that you yes, would God. relieve her of this of the fear and anxiety, yes, God. God. And Lord, because you are greater, Lord, you are greater than that, God. Lord, we just pray, Lord, a, a strength, Lord, and a comfort over her, God. Lord, we just pray right now. In this house, God, that your spirit would just wash over her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, God. Lord, we pray for her friend, God, who is in a coma right now, God. We just pray for a supernatural yes. miracle, God, to take place right now, Lord. We come to you, God, in faith, believing that you're going to do it, and that's already done, God. And, Lord, we just lift this young lady up to you and her family, God. We just pray, Lord, that you would surround them, that you would be, you know, send comfort to them, God. And Lord, we just thank you and we praise, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Anybody else this morning need prayer? Anybody need prayer? Okay. 
Bravo, can you come here? I know you didn't ask for prayer, but we're praying over you today. Y'all lay hands on Bravo. Let's pray for him this morning. God, right now I pray for Bravo. God, and Lord, I've seen what you've done in his life. God, I've seen him come into this house, Lord, in the middle of a prayer service and fall on his feet. God, on his face, sorry, Lord. And that you, you, God, you spoke to him, Lord. And Lord, we know that you're doing good things in him, God. And so, Lord, I come against anything or any person that would try to get in his relationship with you to get in the way. That, Lord, it would reveal, be revealed of anything, Lord, that is there that needs to be gone. God, uh, whether it's thoughts, Lord, or whether it's friends or whatever the case may be. But, Lord, I'm just going by what you're giving me. But I just pray that you would be with him. Lord, what a blessing he is. And I pray that, Lord, his walk with you would continue to grow. That nothing would stand in his way. That he would lift his head up knowing, Lord, that you have a great purpose for him and a calling for him, God. And so, Lord, I pray that you would meet every need in his life. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Amen. Let's worship this morning. Let's worship. Yeah. 
nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every year, lay at your feet. I'll sing through the night, oh God, the battle belongs to you, Lord, I lay, fight on my knees, with my hands lifted high, oh God, the battle belongs to you, when I feel, lay at my feet, I'll sing through the night, oh God. The battle belongs to you. Oh, God. The battle belongs to you. Wow, I... <clears throat> I felt the spirit of the Lord in this place, and I'm so glad that each and every one of you joined us this morning. We have one more week of the deliverance experience. It's actually going to be at 9 and 1030 next week. So come out and join us for the same kind of atmosphere, the same kind of healing, the same kind of feeling of the spirit. Um, don't forget to fill out your connection cards. Um, we want to get connected with you, and that's our best way. Thank you so much for joining us, and you guys are dismissed. <laughs>